been reviewing the situation and Fagan, Nancy, Bill Sykes, the Artful Dodger and of course Oliver are all back in the West End. So I'm here at the Theatre Royal for a tour and I've been told to consider yourself at home. Consider yourself one of the family. And our tour guide is Jodie Prenger. This is the route, follow me. It's clear. Jodie, of course, won her role as Nancy, courtesy of you, the viewing public, in I'll Do Anything. And he's now starring alongside comic genius Rowan Atkinson as the sinister Fagan in the new Sir Cameron Mackintosh production. And talking of Fagan... So where are we? We are in Fagan's kitchen. How good is this? It's amazing. Isn't it good? I mean, look, I mean, this is the biggest stage in the whole of the West End. So is this where you make your first entrance? Yeah. Come right down there. That's yeah. where Nancy comes in and then scoots down with all the boys and everything and then works into the kitchen with all the bits and props and yeah. attention to details, absolutely amazing. You've got all your hankies. You've got your hankies, brilliant. you've got you've got a stove and everything. And what about the audience? Yeah, over two thousand people there in front of you. And when you come on, I actually want to go oh yeah. <laughs> to the you can't you go straight to the thing. <laughs> And from Fagan's grotty den to Jodie's palatial dressing room. <laughs> Assuming we can get in. He's really loud. Have you got a key for it? I think it's in me. I'm bad. <laughs> now, I've got to say, Jodie, this is no ordinary dressing no, room, no. is it? Because there's another dressing room next door. There's my boudoir next door. It's like there's a bed in there. Have you seen the gold cushions? And you're right next to the stage. You're so lucky. It is. It's, it's living the dream. Are oh, you living the dream? Yeah. It's what I always dreamt of, and I just... But I never thought it'd happen. Oh, has it lived up to your expectations, though? Yeah, it really, it really has. It's like, when, especially like when we were in rehearsals and I was stood there and I had Rowan on one side and Burn Gorman on the other and there's Jodie from Blackpool stood in the middle and you just think, is this really happening? And it, and it is. And it, to, to perform with performers like that and to sing the songs that Lionel Bart wrote, it, it's, it's, no, I'm very, very lucky. Five, six, seven, eight. But not so lucky are the kids who have to dance with me. Poor things. As I try my hand at one of the show's dance routines under the watchful eye of associate choreographer Jeff Garrett. the hardest part of working with children? The biggest difficulty really is having 134 children. Um, each night there's 50 kids in the show, three teens, three Olivers, three Dodgers. Because they're all integrated with adults, it's getting enough rehearsal time to put all the children with the adults in every single moment of the show. So everything you do, you have to almost do three times. Any surprises with these children at all? The staging of the show needs the kids to have lots of personality. But sometimes their invention gets slightly too modern or a bit too hip-hop, you know. So we have to make sure they stay within the boundaries <laughs> of the style of the show. So, yeah. Well, I I'm not going to go hip-hop today. I was wondering, yep. do you think I've got what it takes to be on the West End? I do, but you know what you have to do is what? keep practising, practising, practising. Okay, I can do that. Nice and confident. Oh, he's a hard taskmaster. <laughs> enough, no one was asking me for more. Next stop, a chat with... Oliver, Oliver. That's right, two Olivers, Harry and Gwian. One wasn't well, bless, who you voted for alongside Jodie. Plus, we've got three artful Dodgers, Ross, Eric and Robert. What about your parents? Are they all really proud of you? My <laughs> mum, my sisters and my dad were all in line holding hands and my sister started crying for some reason. Have you had a lot of crying then? Yeah, yeah, same, <laughs> yeah. yeah my mum's <laughs> cried a couple of times. That's what we do, that's what yeah. mums do, sorry. It's my dad more. <laughs> <laughs> and Gwen, I understand that you dedicated your role to someone very special, didn't you? Uh, yeah, my grandmother passed away last year. She never got to see me and I do anything. So um, I dedicated my performances to her. Oh, well, I'm sure she would have been very proud of you. Now, guys, I understand that there's more to see. Is that true? More? Yeah, no problem, Alison. Wigs and makeup's just over there. Oh, thanks. Cheers. <laughs> what nice kids. Why did none of them mention the four flights of stairs? Can we nearly there? Oh, phew. 
you? There's over 450 costumes in the show. No. Yeah. But, can I show you my dress? Have you got the best one? <gasps> I've got the red one. I love it. It's a bit it's, shabby. Well, she's been I've running been... through the streets of London. That's very true. Is this your only costume? This is, I only wear one, but there's some people who have to wear six changes, well, have six changes in a show. You joking? And one girl gets changed in ten seconds. Ten seconds? Ten seconds. Does she really do it in ten seconds? With a little help from a friend. <laughs> <laughs> So who takes the longest to get ready? It's not you, is it? No, it's a man. Who is it? Rowan Atkinson. You're joking. No, an hour. How long? An, an hour. hour. An hour. He, that's his wig over there. Yeah. And basically, when they take the ball cap off, it strips the paint off, so they have to repaint it every single show. Oh, my God, the and detail. The that goes into it. It's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Well, listen, these girls are very busy, so we won't bother you any longer. Shall we move on? Let's. See you, girls. See you Ironically, in a musical so full of villains, the good guy, Mr. Brownlow, that's Oliver's grandfather, is played by one of our greatest screen villains, Julian Glover. Look, that's him with Indiana Jones. But why does he think Oliver has stood the test of time? There, um, there are four blockbuster songs in it. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, all through the show. An enormous song, which the audience has to go ah, ah, about. And then in between there are the other, the other songs, little songs like, um, oh, I, oh, I don't know, uh, Pick a Pocket or Two, or, you know, little things like that. Ha <laughs> ha. And the wonderful songs from Nancy, which are interspersed in between. We all know those songs, and we know them because uh, they're so damn good. <laughs> And those fabulous tunes were written by musical genius Lionel Bart, who incidentally wrote Cliff Richard's Living Doll, so now you know. But it is for Oliver that he's best known. So what's Jodie's theory on the musical's longevity? Lionel Bart set this musical in stone. It's just such a feel-good show, even though dying in the end. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe I laugh, maybe maybe I could, why are you laughing? I don't know why, because it's actually quite, it's quite moving. I get bludgeoned to death and you're laughing. No, don't make me, oh, you make me sound terrible. I hope, but I hope you feel I was, I was, I was nervous. What did you do? I got nervous. No, I was in your presence. Don't you laugh. I'm with Jodie. I'm with <laughs> Alison. I've always wanted to meet you. And <laughs> I've always wanted to meet you. I am Phil and Fern. I am. <laughs> now, Josie, yeah. I've always kind of fancied myself as a bit of a Nancy. To be honest with you. Do you, you do know that Cameron never misses an episode of This Morning. You are joking. Yeah. So, so what do I need to do to be, in order to impress him? I tell you what, I've got just the right idea. Follow me. <sighs> so here I am. This is my chance to perform at the Theatre Royal. Oh, fantastic. All I need now is the kids. Come on, gang. I think you could be Nancy. Do you? I do. Well, when you want a day off, I'm there for you. You're on. And Sir Cameron, if you're watching, I'm available. And I'm out of a job. <laughs>